I would like to practice some Taylor polynomials. And I will say that if you look in the caption, you will find a link to Desmos where you can enter your favorite function and you can see the graph of the function together with the first five Taylor polynomials with some center that you can specify. Okay, so in this example, or, or we'll do two examples, but for both of them, we will find the fourth order Taylor polynomial centered at some A, and then we will also write the Taylor series in summation notation. I will remind you the definition of the fourth order, at least we sum k equals zero to four. We have the kth derivative evaluated at A, divided by k factorial, then times x minus a to the k. And here you see, as we did in class, I make this chart to organize my work. Okay, so let us now start our calculations. So k goes zero to four, and then, of course, I'll make a comment when we move to part B, but for part A, this is how far we need to calculate. Well, when k is zero, the kth derivative is just the original function. We evaluate our a here is one. We get the natural log of one, which is zero. Then zero factorial is one. You divide zero over one, we get zero. So this first row is complete. And now we move here when k is one, this is the first derivative, so perhaps I will just start differentiating like this. Then we have, we have a positive 2x to the minus 3, and then we have a negative 3 times 2x to the minus 4. Of course, 3 times 2 is 6, but I'm leaving it for the moment like this because we will see a more general pattern when we try to move on to b. Okay, now you evaluate. Well, the nice thing about the center one, one to any power is just one. And so here we get our coefficients. This is going to be negative six. Okay, divide by k factorial. One factorial is one, two factorial is two, three factorial is three times two, well, times one, but you take two over six, we get a third. Now, four factorial, you take four times three times two times one. This is three times two times one. So if you have minus six, which is three times two, over four times three times two, you see the three times twos will cancel and we get this, okay? Wonderful. Now we're ready for part A, our fourth order Taylor polynomial. Well, we have zero plus one times this x minus a minus, the next coefficient is one half, so minus one half x minus a squared. Then we have plus one third x minus a cubed minus one fourth x minus a to the four. Okay, of course you don't have to write the zero, but I was including it to show where it came from. This is the fourth order Taylor polynomial for the natural log of x centered at a equals one. Okay, well let's think about part B, which is the general Taylor series. If we go back, maybe I'll do the next line in black. If we go back here and think about five, okay, what's gonna happen? We, you might see the pattern, but let's convince ourselves of it. When we differentiate again, you see we get four times three times two x to the minus five. This becomes Again, I will, 
I'm not going to write it as an simplified, I'm going to leave it as this product, okay? And then, as I was discussing in these two, we're gonna have four times three times two over five factorial, which is five times four times three times two, and we get one over five. And if you didn't guess before we got to this k equals five term, Hopefully you see it now that this will continue. You know, if we differentiate again, it'll be a minus five times, four times three times two. We will divide by six factorial, get a negative one over six, okay? So this pattern that you see is really continuing as we keep moving up where K grows without bound. So we may then write this in summation notation, the Taylor series. If you look here, okay, we have an x minus one to the k, and we are dividing by k. That's what we see, right? One, one, two, there's a two in the denominator, three, there's a three in the denominator, and etc. If you notice the sign switch, so we're going to need a minus one to some power. Now here, k is one, it's positive. Two, it's negative. Three, it's positive. Four, it's negative. So we need like a k plus one or a k minus one, but not to the k because here, now let's check. When k is one, we have minus one to the one plus one. Minus one squared is positive. When k is two, we have minus one to the two plus one, minus one to the three, negative. Okay, wonderful. And then again, three, we have three plus one, which is four, positive. Four, four plus one, minus one to the five, negative. This works. You might think, because of the definition, we would naturally do this, k equals zero, and then the series, we just keep adding. But if you look at this definition, there's a problem. What happens when k is zero? Well, first of all, you're dividing by zero. It's problematic. So here, our first term, the zero with term, I should say, is zero. We can just start our sum with one. So we start here. And, and this makes more sense. You really don't want to start adding at zero because you would, have, you would have a zero in the denominator, which is undefined. Okay, so here is our Taylor series and summation notation. I would like to make a comment before we move on to the next example. What we just did is we took the function natural log, we took the center a equals one, and then here in black is, is written out, I included a first few more, right? The fourth order ends here, but then if we're interested only in the Taylor series, right now I'm looking only at this part, it continues, right? And I wrote out a few more terms so that we could see it. So this is the Taylor series, for the natural log centered at a equals one, except it's not in summation notation written in black, okay? This is what we're looking at. And what we found was, this was my answer to part B. This was my answer. Okay, so you notice my answer does not start at zero. This is okay, it's still an infinite sum. We're adding up infinitely many terms and it matches. This is correct. It was my answer that we just saw. Now, let's say you're working on this problem with your neighbor and your neighbor answers this. Is this correct? Well. It initially looks different. In particular, you see the sum starts at zero. And then we see different powers. But this is also correct because what happens here? When k equals zero, 
Well, minus 1 to the 0 is 1. Then we have, so I'll start writing on this one because this is a different answer. When k equals 0, we have 0 plus 1, right? So when k equals 0, we have this term, x minus 1 to the 1. And then when k equals 1, we have the following term, where it's a negative. Then we have squared over 2, x minus 1 squared over 2. Okay, now let's do one more. When k equals 2, you see it's going to be positive, but we have a 3 power, x minus 1 cubed over 3, and this will continue. The next one will be negative. You will find exactly what is here, right? x minus 1 minus x minus 1 squared over 2 plus x minus 1 cubed over 3. The next one will be this, okay? So this way of writing summation notation is exactly the same. These two are exactly the same. The only difference is that the indexing is slightly different. Here we start at 0, here we start at 1, but either one, if you start writing out the terms that you see, let's say we write out the first, this is six terms, you will see exactly these six, okay? So this is the comment that I wanted to make about these two different ways of writing the exact same series in summation notation. Let's do another problem. Part A and B, exact same question. Fourth order Taylor polynomial and write the Taylor series in summation notation. What's changed? We have a new function e to the 3x, and then we have a different center, it's minus 1. Because we are fourth order, we must go through k equals 4. We start taking derivatives. Well, this one, the 0 with derivative, this is the original function, e to the 3x. When you differentiate, it's a chain rule. You're multiplied by 3. And when you continue to differentiate, you continue to get multiplication by 3 at each stage. You can, of course, call this 9, 27, 81. The coefficients in front of each of the 3x, but I have left them as a power of 3 so that when I move on to part B, the Taylor series, I see it, how it matches the index. Okay, now I start evaluating. Well, all of these are evaluated at A is minus one. We have an e to the minus three. We have three e to the minus three. Three squared e to the minus three. Three cubed e to the minus three. Okay, like this. Now we divide by k factorial and we will have our coefficients for the Taylor polynomial. Unlike the last example, you're not gonna see a lot of stuff cancel off. That's okay. Zero factorial is one, one factorial is one. And then here I'm just gonna write the factorial. So I have three squared e to the minus three over two factorial. I have three cubed e to the minus three over 3 factorial, and finally, 3 to the 4th, e to the minus 3 over 4 factorial. And you might see a pattern, hopefully you do, for writing the general term when we get into part B. For now, let's do part A. So this is our zero piece, okay? And then we have this coefficient times well, the center is minus one, so we're gonna have an x plus one. And then we have the next coefficient, three squared, e to the minus three over two factorial. We have an x plus one squared. Okay, now we have two more terms. We have the term with a power up, x plus one cubed, this coefficient. x plus 1 cubed, and finally, with an x plus 1 to the fourth, we have the last coefficient. 
we have x plus 1 to the fourth. This is our degree 4 Taylor polynomial. Part B. Okay, we have a sum. What does the kth term look like? Well, we have an x plus 1 to the k divided by k factorial. We have a 3 to the k and a e to the minus 3. And then we sum like this. This is our Taylor series.